to you. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. What an awesome day it is. It is. Great week. Yes. At Palm Sunday last week. Made, well, we, you guys oh, yeah. didn't see last made week's the crosses. show. Yeah, go back on watch last week's show where we made our little palm crosses. This thing's know. crunchy now. <laughs> it's not doing well, but it, that was a blast. That was so much fun just spending time with the kids amazing. and doing that. Speaking of the weekend, that was last week. What, what went on this weekend, Pastor? Wow. Well, we had a lot happening. We uh, gearing up for Easter, of course. Everybody's excited. You know, this time last year, everybody was kind of closed down. And so we've been firing everywhere. Of course, our church is in Connecticut. We're launching in Madeira Beach, Florida, Easter. So that's exciting. And when we were, this really happened. We knocked on a woman's door in Connecticut. She answered the door, started crying. Not lying. She said, I've not seen a human since March. And literally started crying. It was unbelievable. Shy. We invited her, prayed for. As we were leaving the door shut, you can hear her yelling, "Thank you, Jesus, you sent somebody to me." So, wow. Just, just a reminder, man, that you know the whole world wow. in Florida, dude. People are like <laughs> hurting and locked up, and we need to see freedom on these people. So, Easter, Resurrection Sunday is a great opportunity to invite people to go to your church. Come on, absolutely. Resurrection absolutely. Sunday. You think about Resurrection Sunday. How many people are being resurrected from their houses? I know, man. And coming to church maybe for the first and time. She says, "Jesus, oh thank God. you, you sent someone." And yeah. people always, you know, Lord, send me, send me. Just go next door. <laughs> I'm not right. somebody in a year. I mean, come on. Who's doing yeah. your Instacart? Somebody's being sent. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right. Well, you know, we always have our church sign. Lori loves these. I don't know where she finds these. People send them to her and everything. Anyway, so she found this one, which I thought was pretty I really clever. think this is pretty good. Social distancing does not apply to God. Draw near to him. Love it. Come on. That's really, really <laughs> good. six-foot separation rule or not. I guess it's three feet or whatever. So. Yeah, isn't that good? Classic. I'll need a mask for God. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Unmask. Unmask. All right, and then, of course, I always try to bring a joke forward. So I found this cartoon, and I um, hope you guys enjoy this. But this is why the disciples didn't like playing football with Lazarus. Every time we tell him the play's been whistled dead, he says, no big deal, and keeps going. Okay. That cracks me up. That is hilarious, I love except it. I'm kind of like, what? So I had to ask Pastor James, what uh, does that mean? She didn't know. <laughs> so tell the viewers, they I might not know. I had to explain to her. So in football, every time the ref blows the whistle, it's called the play is dead. They have to stop playing or they could get in big trouble for it. So in this aspect, the ref blew the whistle, said the play is dead, and Lazarus said, no, we're going to keep going. Because, <laughs> of course, he was raised from the dead. <laughs> Doesn't and apply to me. Love that, man. Situationally appropriate for Passion Week. Yeah, uh, yes. Yes. John 12. Come on, Jesus right. came to his house and come on, this yeah. is like really prophetic. Good. Like, that's that's good. Good. Like, by, he's got about 400 of these, and I just chose that one. Didn't even realize. Come on, yeah, anyway, it fits. So, yeah. Funny, funny stuff. We hope you oh enjoy gosh, that on your hilarious. Monday morning. Good way to start the morning. Um, but yeah, that was uh, by Kyler Black, and um, I got to reach out to him because he's got so many of those. Maybe we'll reach awesome. out to him, maybe have him on the show or something. That would be, That'd fun. be fun. All right, so what's going on this week, Lori? Mm -hmm. National days. Yeah, you know what. April 1st is the first, it's MLB day. National opening day for opening Major League Baseball. For, yes. Love, love Thursday. Spring training. Speaking of, I, I probably shouldn't have said MLB. Baseball. Favorite baseball I don't team? I do baseball, probably New York teams. I don't, you know, I used to wear the hats to look cool. So I don't really like <laughs> baseball. Yeah, fan, you just like that. That. yeah, I mean, you can get me into it. <laughs> And then you get to be a Rays fan now. That you're yeah, we got the stadium here. There you so. go. Yeah. Then it's also National, National Burrito, Burrito Day. Burrito Day this week. Love burritos. So who doesn't like a burrito? I mean, you could even okay, it's breakfast time. You could have a breakfast burrito. Breakfast burrito. Scrambled eggs, bacon. Okay, I'm so. hungry now. Burritos. All right, but those are the, just the fun ones that we're talking about this week. The big day, of course, Friday coming up, and then of course Sunday, Friday being Good Friday. And Sunday being Easter. Sunday, Pastor already talked about invite somebody to your church this Sunday. No streaming Please make service. That at invite least them to attend first. in person. Because as Lori said on her church sign, there's no social distancing with God. You need oh, to get close draw to near him, to him. So. He'll draw near and to you. And everything's tying into Easter. Everything we're doing today is tied all. into Easter but, Sunday. You know, if you've been closed up, um, go to a church somewhere on Easter Sunday. Absolutely. Make that your spring revival. Get revived by God because that's what revival is. It's in the heart. All right, next we want to talk about, is that really in the Bible? <laughs> yeah, this was fun. Um, actually, this is cool. I could get to the big screen for this. This, in is, there. this is so classic. It's like, okay, yeah. next. Right? Next, next. Hey, that's, you know, that's how my brain works. <laughs> Segmented. Okay, we got to get to our next segment. Come on, move. Anyway, is that really in the Bible? A whale swallowed Jonah. Is that in the Bible? True or false? Brooke, true or false? Uh, true. No. No. It's false. 
Oh, oh, leave Brooke, Brooke alone. There, right? <laughs> leave Brooke alone. <laughs> it's too early. That ain't fair. That was a that was a trick question. It was a trick question. It, it says a great fish or a big fish. Um, it's so semantics. Anyway, yeah, exactly. We don't know. It could have been a whale. It could have been a Goliath grouper. A grouper. Which we we saw here. some of those mammoths. <laughs> well, a Goliath grouper. I mean, we actually saw one uh, one year on our boat that floated up. It from, died during it red died. tide, and that thing was as big no. as It was no. bigger than this rug. Bigger than this massive. rug. I mean, it was just massive. There's so catfish you never that sit know. at the bottom of some of those dams up in the in You see the, the guy in Clearwater this this past week? A humpback whale was in the Gulf. What? Oh, I did not see that. Around. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So anyway, there was it like could have been a whale, but whatever. We okay, see. wait. I want to say something before you go. Okay, uh, we already had the next one, so I'll say it after. Go okay. ahead. <laughs> to everything, a season. Is that in the Bible? Or was that a song in the 60s by, who was that, the Mamas and Papas or somebody like that? Anyway, was it here? Season. is it in the Bible? It <laughs> yes, it is in it the is. Bible. Ecclesiastes 3 1, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. That is a great And we brought passage. that forward because we are in a new season. It just started. Spring is here. We had spring training baseball. Now we have Major League Baseball opening Thursday, so now we're in spring. And what better to do in spring than what? Get outside, start getting out again. When go to cold church. Winter's over, go to church <laughs> for Easter. Easter. Lori's <laughs> burden for the lady in West Haven. Yeah, poor lady. In New Haven, stuck in her townhouse. Yeah. That just broke my heart. Or and have a picnic. Well, so, with a picnic. Yeah, I mean, it's springtime. So, you know, in springtime, you need to kind of adjust or you want to adjust what you're going to eat. So, we thought, what can you do on a picnic or have one in your house if you have to? But anyway, so springtime, lots of fun ways to eat new fruits and vegetables. So so we have this little Christian fitness segment on what you can do to have more fun at your picnic. So watch this. You've got to have food at your picnic, right? So we're going to show you some fun ideas for just little finger prep fruit foods for your picnic. And we did prep everything ahead of time. Yeah, we cut so. it ahead of time just so we wouldn't have any take up time doing that. But picnicky, you know, a lot of times you can make your plans and have your ideas, and then you know it might be snowing or raining outside or whatever. Have a picnic inside. Well, you we don't did that. Have to go somewhere. Right. We did that. We had a picnic we planned, everything ready to go, and all of a sudden it started raining, and we were only about ten minutes away from where we were going, so. We just decided to throw the blanket on the floor in the living room and just picnic to home. So, which is what we're going to do today, because as you see, we are indoors, even though we have our fake outdoor carpet and everything. But anyway, well, what <laughs> we about are indoors, grilling? That's what we're doing today. If you do, if you grill at all, that's a picnic at home. Actually, I never even thought about yeah. it until I just said that. Little so, grill. Yeah. So, what do you want to do first? Let's do the um, strawberries. What we're going to do first is just little individual items. So, we've just got three simple fruits today. You could use whatever you want. You can use bananas, apples, grapes. Um, we just chose to use strawberries, pineapple, and watermelon for today. Oh, here's a tip. If you want to do these, you might want to go early enough and find them because we searched in several places and I ended up finding big, long kebab skewers. But hey, they're great for holding things. Yeah, we were going to use cantaloupe and all kinds of things, but we didn't have time. First, we want you to start with just a single. You so, want a little one? Yeah, just real simple. We've got these little, we actually have three different skewers. We have the longer kebab. We have little coffee stir kind of popsicle sticks, and then we have just the little shorter ones, just to have more fun with it. Um, but as you can see, these work really great. Yeah, you slide these on; it just makes a better presentation. It's easier for people to grab. So I just did pineapple and strawberry and pineapple, which you I love. Pineapple. Do whatever variation you want. You can just do singles. You can just do a single pineapple. And you know what? Well, that that's pretty toothpicks. Do yep. toothpicks. Toothpicks will do that. But Look here's the, the key: if you're doing <laughs> a grill at home or picnic or whatever you're doing, you know what, pick healthy stuff and then make it look fun. And that's why we decided to do this today because we really want healthy, healthy, you know, super healthy foods and eliminate all the other stuff. I'm going to make this look so much different and fun. We actually need to cut up some watermelon. Oh, yeah. Okay, so the watermelon, we have a little fun tip slash trick for the watermelon. Excuse While me. You do that. Yeah, let me just step across there. <laughs> oh, and he has a band-aid on his finger. He did not cut himself doing this. No, that's a that was a home <laughs> repair, remodel. We won't even get into that right now. Uh, but anyway, so you can take your pineapple. We already pre-cut it into, you know, about an inch or so thick. 
I mean, then what you can simply do, you've got your little, you know, pizza wedge. Oh, you wedge, want to do the, okay. And then you just take one of these, we're using, like I said, coffee stirs. You can use other things. You oh, just planning stick it into the bottom. Whoops. ahead is such a good thing with this. We needed popsicle sticks and could not find them. So we are using coffee stirs. So which, a coffee stir works great. You know, of course, it's already got the rind, which you can wobbly. hold on to the rind. But yeah, it's fun. It just makes it more fun. Popsicle, popsicle sticks, it of course, are a little for kids. Bit more sturdy and stable. Or maybe my, pine, my watermelon is too big. Yeah. Anyway, another fun thing you can do with the watermelon, something else that I really enjoy. Just, okay. you know, this is kind of plain and boring. So we got out some old Christmas cookie cutters. He actually has a thing about I this. I love doing this. <laughs> I don't know why. He has a and thing you just about punch out it. your little cookie hole. So I've got a heart. What do we have over there? A heart and a star. So now put oh, a heart on one cute. of those. How you cool did is that going to be? Here, there's your skewer. So, I mean, not really. This is not. Uh, these little heart. <laughs> there. Okay. There's so another heart. There's you your heart. Your you star. can do one. Yeah, get a star going here. Do one. Do one too. Okay, I'm gonna do it this way. I guess Oop. we're gonna be the ones eating this because we're you know, handling all, all of it. There. Oh, uh, hey. How cool is that? Oh, uh, we don't have enough to do a star, another star, but no, that but is super star. cute. Here, let's do a giant. And then you can have fun with your giant kebab. So if you want a full fruit kebab, yes. you can combine all these. So I'm gonna take my but, star hey, off of there. What a mess. Here, let's do this. I'm gonna put this over here so you can Where's actually the heart? see hey, it. Whoa, what's, it's what are you right doing here. with that? Sorry. <laughs> what did I say? Here, let's put, put the heart on here. Oh, you want let's, the heart yeah, on we top can slide of it? This down. Okay. Just don't poke too many holes in a it watermelon because it will fall apart. There. Cute. Give me a pineapple to top it off. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Super cute. Healthy. How fun is so that? So much vitamin C here, potassium and watermelon, more vitamin C, and then this is a combination of all kinds of oh, plus my heart is upside down, though. fiber, fervor. The heart was upside down. Okay. There. That's cute. So fun way to have a healthy snack. Then you take make this it out. look cute. Yeah, and take this kids out to all the love people. these popsicles. So you take that plate. I mean, what's going to be more fun? That or just you know having a dish with two toothpicks next to it? Well, the traditional yeah, this fun thing. Just things. to have fun with it. The kids will have a blast. Adults will have a blast, as you saw. The traditional the fun thing fun with, with watermelon is just to have a big, just slice it all up. So anyway, that was our picnic that food for the day. A little bit messy, but uh, still fun. That was hilarious. That's a blast. We're sitting here talking to each other after <laughs> this thing. It's like, what? Hello. <laughs> that was a blast. That was so much fun. Make that fun. You know what? That's one of those things you could do as a whole family. You know, get it all prepared and just make it a whole event about doing the fruit kebabs. Mm -hmm. So that was a blast. Yeah, healthy way to have a picnic, healthy way to snack and fun. Just or serve your guests. cookie cutters and yeah. You can so do you don't have to just use them at Christmas people. time. Use those oh. cookie cutters anytime to cut out your fruit. Oh, so. that's right. That was the. Uh... You know, we encourage you every week just to move more. You know, this is part of Christian fitness, and we encourage you just, you know, we've done everything about prolonged sitting, how dangerous that is for you. We want you to get up every hour or two and do things and move around. So today we're going to do some just simple stretches. What's our first stretch, honey? Our first stretch is a side lunge. Side lunge. So a lot of people understand a lunge where you just step out and would dip down. That's your regular lunge which just works, you know, stretches the quad, works the strength of the front quad. But if you go out to the side, so angle out this way, it's going to work actually the inner and outer portion of the thigh instead of just the front of the quad leaning forward. And you, you can go both sides. That? So you no. come out to the right. You don't. Nope. nope, both feet forward. Yeah. And lean to the other side. I mine bent. And then come back. And you dip down just a little bit. So you would maybe pump, I don't know, two or three times. I was doing something wrong. So don't do what I was doing right then. Don't lean forward. I mean, you, you might feel like you need to, but you really don't. If your feet are positioned properly, you won't lean forward. And once your center of gravity and your spine up nice and straight and your center of gravity over your hips. And if you can't go that far, just, you know, go from here and go like this and just pump once or twice. And then what was that video we watched where it's like, you know, you'd be a puppet? And... <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, our exercise video from the 50s where they encourage you to be a puppet, Keep get your, your spine straight. nice and straight. Yeah. Keep your back Yeah, so this straight. is a side lunge. And you'll really start to feel this. I'm going to read something about this. Strengthening the inner and outer thighs. This works your quad cap muscles from another angle, right. which is really important. Yes. 
And that helps with your stability. So if you're used to just doing, you know, you, let's say you go to the gym and you do this, you know, every week, <laughs> eventually you're going to get bored with it. So step out to the side, work some of the other muscles. It's going to help with your hip flexors. You know what we should have done first, though? What's that? We did not warm up. So this I will is tell a warm up. You, it's a warm up, <laughs> but this can, if you don't stand right, um, like if you're leaning forward, you may feel some pressure on your knees. So that's probably the most important part is warm up. Do a little bit of a warm up. Even though this is a warm up, you mm -hmm. might need to do oh, a little bit more than that. Definitely like, warm up. You can squat and do this with your knees so that you just kind of warm yourself up. Yeah, and if you do have knee issues or hip issues or anything like that, you can vary the position of the foot. Yeah. You don't have to keep them straight forward like I have. You can put your foot out this way if it's more comfortable for you. So Hi don't there. be so disciplined. We have to do it exactly this way. Whatever is comfortable, but still going to get you. We're just trying to get you to move. So just move more. All right, what do we have next, honey? So now the my thighs are starting to calf sweat. stretch. Calf. This is a really good one. Very important. Calf stretch. Again, just lean forward on this foot. And what you want to do on your back leg Whoa. is force the heel down. There's a drop off there. <laughs> <laughs> just force the heel down, which is going to stretch the calf. It's that simple. There is a huge so drop off there. I know. We've got a pad under the mat. So. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, just push the back heel down, and that'll stretch the calf. And why is stretching our calf so important? Stretching the calf. Man, this is burning. Increasing <laughs> circulation decreases frequency of leg cramps. Increased range of motion prevents Achilles tendis, tendinitis. Prevent uh, shin splints and prevents plantar Fasciitis. Oh, that's a good word to say. Monday morning, it's whatever time it is. Anyway, so we've push been up the since heel down, stretch out the calf, as Lori mentioned, all these <laughs> things. Really, really important to get that calf stretched. This is just, you know, for an early morning like this, this really gets the blood flowing. We talk about it every week, but just get your blood flowing, which gets oxygen going. Well, you'll feel heat. You can feel the heat in the muscles, and that means you're, like I said last week, your furnace is starting to turn on. If you start, like I'm already starting to perspire a little bit, that means my body's working. So it means that my furnace is on. And you need that furnace on to burn weight, you Absolutely. know, to burn calories. Yeah. What's next? One more? Two more. Um, oh, hip flexor. Hip flexor. This is really, actually, the first exercise we did is great for the hip flexor as well. This side to side squat is really good to, for your hips. But we're going to dip forward. So we just did the calf stretch where you forced your knee down. Now you want to force the knee down to the ground, which is almost like a normal lunge. Toe bent. But it's going to flex the hip yeah. right here. Hip flexor. And yes, you'll feel this burning. Yeah, you'll switch it, especially after everything we've already <laughs> done with the legs. Yeah, I mean, I'm <laughs> So just dip the back knee and really flex this hip. Another one of my favorites for this, just to get your hips warmed up, which, why don't you read our stats on the hips real quickly while we do this? Okay, these. the hip flexor lightens Lightness is one of the leading causes of lower back and hip pain. Stretching prevents back and hip pain. Tightness, so, I believe. Tight, is what is that, that what word it was. is? <laughs> we'll, we'll print it bigger next time. <laughs> <laughs> it is tightness. Hip tightness. Tightness. I'm going lightness. I feel right. Yeah. So Sorry. hip tightness it causes all kinds of lower back issues. So we're flexing the hip there. Another real simple one you can do for the hip flexor is just cross your legs. And you'll just, it'll just simply stretch wow, across. that feels good. It's outside of the hip, which is your hip flexor. Just a real simple thing in the morning. Just cross your legs. It feels good and let after. That stretch. We needed to do more than that because we worked at the church this weekend and. and <laughs> a little bit sore, huh? Yeah, well, but it was all arms because yeah, we true, were putting true. up a wall yeah. for the kids' room. Oh my gosh, kids. They're all right, so our last one, our last stretch for this morning is a butterfly stretch. So you're going to have a seat. Which most of you are probably already seated on your couch. You can try this on your couch. What? They weren't doing it? Well, well you never know. <laughs> bring one leg up. I mean, it doesn't matter. If it's out here that far, that's fine. If you're flexible enough, bring it up. And you just want to push the knee out just a little bit. Put a little bit Don't of pressure bounce. right here. Don't bounce it. If you can do both legs at the same time, great. We're going to do one at a time. So the butterfly stretch is good for kidneys, prostate gland, even people affected by urinary problems, who would have ever thought that this would help you <laughs> yeah. this way? It also helps with fluid retention and digestion. So isn't it interesting how a flex like this, stretching like this, could help other things that you, we don't declare over you, but could possibly having mm -hmm. an issue with? Yeah, read those again. This, I mean, this is pretty fascinating when you think about it. Butterfly stretch is good for kidneys, prostate gland, and even people that are affected with urinary problems, it also helps fluid retention and digestion. That is pretty amazing. 
I and the, very the hip flexor as well. As you do this, of course, you'll feel it in your hip as well. But yeah, who would have ever thought that doing this would help with the kidneys you know and a lot of your internal organs? I notice. Like I tend to sometimes drop yeah, you down. Sit up I don't straight. know why I do that. Sit up nice and yeah, straight. Yeah, you can drop your rib cage, and you don't want to drop your rib cage. You really want to keep your keep yourself really upright. Yeah, try this. If you're sitting on your couch still, like drinking him. your coffee. Perfect. Yeah. Just pull one up, one leg up on your sofa, and do a butterfly stretch. So that's our Move More Challenge for today. Just stretch a little bit more. Oh, just stretch right, a Lori, little bit more. Post yes. it. Scripture. What's our scripture our for today? Scripture is Ephesians 1, 19 and 20. Um, I love this. And this is from the um, Passion Translation. I think this is probably one of the, I just, I love this. I pray that you will continu continually experience the immeasurable greatness of God's power made available to you through faith. Then your lives will be an advertisement of this immense power as it works through you. This is the mighty power that was released when God raised Christ from the dead and exalted him to the place of highest honor and supreme authority in the heavenly realm. Wow. <laughs> mighty, mighty working. Well, when you believe and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that mighty power now lives in you. So you are seated with Christ in heavenly places. But oh my gosh, this is just so. Paul's teaching this. He wants people to understand and experience the immeasurable greatness of God's power made available through faith, through what you believe in Christ. I love that. Your lives will be an advertisement of this immense power. So is your life an advertisement? I mean, think about it. We're yeah. advertising all the time, you know, because people are watching what you do. They watch what you say. I mean, if companies spend millions and millions of dollars advertising. What do they mm -hmm. advertise? Their product. They're trying to advertise their product so yep. that you'll buy their product. So I'm always thinking, man, are we advertising Jesus? Are people going to want to want what we have? Or are they going to say, oh, and he, they claim to be a Christian? That guy's got a Christian fish on his car and he cut me off and did all that. No, 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 no. That's, that's <laughs> the wrong advertisement. So. Wow, so true. That's good. Pastor. I mean, we may be the only Bible people read, right? Absolutely. Yeah, you the know what? Bible they'll see. Yeah. So true. Yeah. So are we an advertisement? Are we an advertisement for Jesus? Yeah. And the power. I love that. The immense power. So are we walking in that power? Same spirit and power that raised Christ from the dead. Exactly. I mean, think about that. Same spirit that raised Christ. Romans 8, was it 8, 10, 11. Yeah. Same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead lives in you and quickens your mortal body. But this is not just, I mean, yes, for a healing and everything else, but it's quickening. That's you experiencing Jesus in you, the Holy Spirit in you, every day, all day. Amen. You know, I think, especially, you know, we've been talking about this Passion Week, you know, and, and like we were teasing about the Lazarus, um, you know, comic. The football comic. Card, yeah. yeah, but the crazy thing is that miracle was... Um, it was like monumental because for the people that believed in Jesus, it almost like made them feel like, man, this guy really is the Messiah because the power we saw and the people that didn't like Jesus wanted to like re-kill Lazarus, right? Wow. Mm -hmm. and, and, it, it, and here's what it says. They came together in John 12. It said they came together to figure out how they can stop him because because of the power of God, everybody was starting to believe. And one thing I believe when it comes to the power of God is this is why we need it today in our nation, yes, right? Absolutely. And because people will believe when they see miracles. They will, you know, we had a woman testify of having cancer results that just got completely, you know, eradicated. And man, there's people in that meeting that didn't know God and they're like, wow, you know. He is they, real. Yeah, he yeah, is real. Yeah. And so uh, I want to read this scripture though um, that I believe ties into this and it's Ephesians 3:20. And it says, to him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ever ask, think, or imagine. I mean, think about that. Mm. But according to the power that works in us. Come on. So the, the crazy thing about power is we control the valve, yeah, right? So good. it's like he has all, think about all that he has for us according to his power that works in us. But we're the ones that have to say yes or no, right? And so I just want to encourage all of you today. Look, God wants to put this immeasurable power through your life, right? He wants, especially as we're coming, it really is a resurrection on so many levels of people getting back to normal and getting back to God and kind of thawing out a little bit. Mm -hmm. Let's allow that power to be ha have its way in our lives, right? Let's, let's live in a posture of surrender where, you know, we can have that power 
you know, change us from the inside mm -hmm. out, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. I like that, change us from the inside out. That's, that's the whole portion. I mean, that's it. That's all of what God wants us to do is change, constantly have him working on our hearts so we become more like him for others, but that we can actually, re we've already received all the benefits. We received everything from him. True. But yet, are we drawing from that? Right. When you talk about the power, I always like to think of like electricity, like the lights we have on in here. Right. That power is available. The electricity is here. Right. But if we leave the light switch off, you walk in, what happens in the dark? You're going to stumble onto things. You're going to stub your Come toe. Come on, you're that's, that's a message. And God's up there going, um, hello, would you hit right. that light switch? Just, you've got the power. Just hit the switch, please. Right. Get out of the darkness. Come into the light. We've got that power available, but are we turning that switch on? Got to hit wow. that switch so to get good. that power. And you know, I've always felt like God wants to, I always liken it to, it, it comes to us, in us, and through us. Mm. And so there's a moment this power comes on our lives, but it has to come in our lives to transform us. And then ultimately, God wants you to be a light wherever you are, in your schools, in your families. Yes. Like we have to be the light. Jesus said, you're the light of the world. A city on the hill can't be hidden. And so I'd like to pray if we can. I just want to pray for all of you at home. And let's believe that this, um, what better week than Passion Week for a light to shine on Resurrection Week. So, Father, in Jesus' name, every person and partner and loved one watching us right now, we thank you for this family. And we pray that your power would be at work in our lives this week. God, whatever we're doing to make it darker, we flip that switch, like Rob said. We turn that light on and allow you to have your way in our lives. Lord, I pray that this would truly be a week of a resurrection in and through our lives. We thank you for it, God. You be the glory for all that you're about to do. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 That Come on. Awesome, awesome. It ties back into that Ephesians scripture, the advertisement. Be that light. Be that advertisement oh. of Jesus. And I love the woman from, where was it? New Haven? In New that Haven. you guys oh knocked on her door. Goodness. and I haven't seen a human in a year. Wow. Crazy. Thank you, Jesus, for sending someone. Yeah, tears flowing down her Man, face. Man, that, that's Just, powerful. That's the love of Christ. Gosh, that's good. That's the and, love and of Christ. And it's around people are hurting, right? They need They need crazy. connection, and we're connected to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And while we're at it for a few seconds, my anniversary today. Happy anniversary. Oh, that's right. Yes. My Happy wife, love you, Debbie. <laughs> Happy anniversary. Yes. Uh, oh, my so gosh. 13 years? Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Crazy. That's and three precious Lord. children, so Just blessed. Yeah, letting that light shine. Right? Come on. It's so, yeah, so good. It. Well, listen, thank you so much for joining us today. Remember the Move More Challenge. Just get up, move more, stretch a little bit, and enjoy this Passion Week and the Resurrection. Come on. Love you guys. Thank bless you so much for joining us. God bless. We love you. Dude.